Good morning, YouTube. Woke up extra early this morning and started to check the news, and I did my regular little thing on pink slime to see if any more people were pulling out. And this is a news story I came up with. Um, fresh, hot off the presses, I'm telling you, because I didn't even hear it on the Wall Street Journal update this morning. All right, this is coming from Fox 11 online, so you can read the story yourself if you want better photos, or better than my photos. Okay, pink slime makers suspend some plant operations. Well, people, we can kind of consider that a victory of sorts. And I don't know how much we want to consider it a victory. Is that, uh, where'd I go, where'd it go here now? that uh, people are going to be losing their jobs. I mean, let's face it. Amarillo, Texas, Garden City, Kansas, and Waterloo, Iowa. Okay, they're going to be losing jobs at about 200 employees at each one of those three plants. And they're going to get benefits and stuff for 60 days, but have you tried to find a new job in 60 days? It's just, it's going to be hard as heck for these people to do. Well, they're going to be rebuilding, and there's a website for people to go to called httpbeefisbeef.com. I have not gone to look at it yet. Um, maybe somebody will, or actually maybe I'll do that later on today and repost again. Okay, there are no real numbers as to how often we eat this stuff, but estimates have ranged that 70% of the meat... 70% of the meat that we eat has this in there of some sort. All right. Uh, one industry official has estimated at least half of the ground meat and burgers in the United States contain this stuff. McDonald's has said we will not be using this stuff anymore. Okay. Now, when McDonald's turns around and says they're not using something, you know something's up, because McDonald's is all about profits. All right, the USDA this year has contracted to buy 111.5 million pounds of ground beef for the national school lunch programs. Seven million pounds of that. Seven million pounds of that is going to be coming from this company. All right, that's a lot of product that this company is going to lose, a lot of profits this company is going to lose. That's a lot of product going into our children's tummies. All right, now, I'm no fan of Jamie Oliver. All right, but there's stuff in here that he says that I do agree with. And I'll just paraphrase what he's saying. Basically, what he's saying is that this is partially the government's fault for not making people or the companies that use this meat filler for declaring it. If the government had allowed these people to declare, or made these people declare that on in their meat product was this pink slime, for lack of a better term, then the consumer themselves would have gotten these people, you know, to stop using it a long time ago. But because they snuck it in, then people are really upset about it right now. Well, me being the person that I am, I decided to look up some other sources as well. And I found this one in the Chicago Tribune, who interviewed the scientist who first coined the phrase pink slime. And there were a couple of interesting things that I found interesting as well, okay, that I found in the story. Such as the fact that the original reference to pink slime was done in a private email and somehow later that email became public. So this guy never meant for that to get out into the public. Uh, or he was a microbiologist that was hired to see if this was going to be safe for human consumption. All right. But he, uh, he never meant for this to get out into the, the public. He was going to keep silent on this just like everybody else has done. Okay, the American Meat Indus Institute, all right, these people that we expect to be on the consumer side, 
All right, they're trying to say that it's 98% lean beef, and it could be that it's 98% from beef. All right, it makes you kind of wonder what the other 2% is. I doubt that it's fat. All right, and the USDA continues to say that it's safe. People are listening. Companies are listening better than the USDA is. All right, the whole thing went viral. Yeah, because people became aware of what they were eating. You have to wonder if this ammonia, the ammonia peroxide that they use in this stuff that they say is perfectly safe, you have to wonder, all right, um, I mean, the trimmings that they used were stuff that would normally have gone into dog food or cat food. And it was used for making cooking oil out of. Which is interesting in and of itself because when you look at cooking oil, it usually says that it's vegetable oil. So how could they be using any sort of beef product in there? Um, is this another false advertising that we're not being told about? The per ammonia peroxide, let's get back to that. Okay, the ammonia peroxide that they are using to treat this stuff with. Where did I see that in here? All right, you have to wonder how that is contributing to the increase that we have seen in autism. Although, I've got my own opinions on aut the, the increase of the autism. The increase of Alzheimer's. The increase of cancers. Um, the increase of learning disabilities, the increase of disabilities in general. You really have to wonder what the impact of this has been. Uh, it sounds like the guy was originally, you know, tuned into this in 2002. Now, 2002, what happened in 2002? Well, let's see. There was the big thing that claimed that McDonald's was using worms in the burgers. Does anybody remember that? Worms in the burgers? Okay. Hey, maybe someone accidentally came across the pink slime story way back then and nobody listened. Oh, if anybody was part of that, I would love to hear from them and find out if that could be what was going on, is that they had accidentally stumbled upon the pink slime before anybody else did. 